Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees, and here I am today in front of my house on the opposite side, I'm on the inside of my yard, and I'm in front of a star apple tree, also known as Kamito. And I'm always trying to figure out with my trees here in my small yard, where's the best place to strategically plant fruit trees? So when you have a small yard and you're in a neighborhood where people walk by, you really want to do this strategically. But I was recently at Trek, which is a University of Florida institution for uh, researching tropical fruit trees. And they have, I think, like 100 acres. And even they had a situation where there's better places to put fruit trees than other trees. And today we're going to see an example of one of the mistakes they made in putting a fruit tree in the wrong place. And it is actually the Kamito, the star apple. Uh, they still got an abundant amount of fruit on it, but uh, they openly admit that it wasn't the best place because of the wind and because of the sun the tree gets. Uh, we're going to see Jonathan Crane here on the video now. It was a windy day, and it's a great example because the wind is what actually made them realize uh, or just made me able to show you how they planted in the wrong place. I have my star apple, this one, right in front of my tree, right near my fence. Not that many people know about this tree. Uh, as opposed to a mango or something else. The wind here, you know, it will pick up, but it's being blocked a little by the mulberry tree next to it. But here's Jonathan Crane talking about the star apple tree. Mind the wind uh, with the sound. Uh, it gets a little better as the video goes on. And in the end, he's talking about some other tr fruits as well. Put your comments below and let me know your experience with star apple and the, the places you planted them and how the results were. Here goes Jonathan. Okay, so here we are with our star apple, also known as Kamito. Yep. How many uh, how many star apple trees do you have here? Uh, I've got probably ten star apple trees. Different varieties. Different varieties. Different? Yeah. In fact, this one is Hippolito. Uh, uh, Hippolito. This is the one that uh, Laura Farms has, yes, right? Yes. And Julian was kind enough to, to donate it to us. And this is sort of a good example of one of the issues for uh, Kamito want to plant it in a, in a more wind protected site and you can see this tree blowing around in the wind and that's not a good situation uh, several reasons one is uh, the cold weather cold dry winds can cause you know excessive defoliation uh, it would cause the defoliation you can end up getting sunburn on the fruit um, which then ruins the fruit um, the growth isn't as good um, as it is when it's in a wind protected location. So these three Kaimito trees, this is not a great location um, on, the, on this Now is this something you learned from putting it here or you knew that before and you just all... <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, that's a good embarrassing question. Um, I knew that before, um, but we were looking to plant some and I needed to get the trees in the ground. So I said, you know what, I'll just put them in here for now. So really, if I had a do-over, I would put them inside the planting, uh, where I think they would do much, much better. Now, if you had to move them, are, are these trees easy to uproot and move oh, or not? I'll tell you, I've never moved one. So okay. that I don't know. I don't think they would be easy. Mangoes are pretty easy, though. Yeah, mangoes and avocados especially uh, much easier. So you can see, but you also see, because the fruit is being banged around, you see the scarring, uh, and this is you know banging into each other, banging into this limb, you know scratching it, and that detracts you know from how how pretty it could be. This one's ready or just about ready, but um, and and you know you can see probably this is starting to get a little bit of sunburn, and that's part of the problem when it defoliates. Here you, here you go again, you've, you've got this exposed area and it gets overheated and that causes damage and, and, and ruins the fruit. Now how old is this tree? This tree is uh, planted in 2016, so it's only about five years, six years old. And now, uh, how tall can you keep these trees if you wanted to? Well, you could, you know, not prune it and let it go um, and it'll probably get, you know, 25, 30 feet if you let it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that again for all the reasons I spoke about uh, with with mango. So it looks pretty good. Right. Now, of course, you see a lot of latex. Um, 
you don't want to you know you want to try to avoid eating uh the latex and the latex here with this be white the, this the white, white stuff yeah. yeah so you know you can't really get uh eat the pulp that's right next to the peel that's not a good thing but generally um that's interesting because usually when i cut these open i don't see as much latex around like this uh -huh. which is very unpleasant so I'd want to wash this off a little so somebody bit. Somebody would just take a spoon and just and then take a spoon and eat it. Now the latex yes. isn't poison; it just doesn't taste good or feel. That's good right. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. And it, yeah, as far as I know, it's not poison. No. Yeah. Okay. So how short can you keep these trees if you wanted to? Yeah. Can you do these with high intensity gardening as well? Yeah, I think. You know, I I have one in my yard, and I'm basically going to keep it at 12 feet or below, and I'm going to try to maintain the lower canopy and just repeatedly take the top Can you keep it, it at eight feet if you wanted to you could try you could try i've not tried that but i, I like i said I'm, I'm theoretically gonna let mine get to about 12 feet it's right now it's at about 10 feet um, now julian told me these trees are the the least work of every tree is, they, they, is that true they need to well i don't know i you know i don't know uh, i don't know of any major insect or disease issues which really can be a problem in a lot of trees right and so more it has to do with environmental issues too windy a site, uh, too much sun exposure. Um, so if you can site it in an area uh, that has much less wind, um, it'll probably do much, much better. And like I said, I, I don't really recall much in the way of insect or disease problems here in South Florida with this tree. Let's say you planted a three gallon of this, how long before it starts fruiting? Um, three gallon tree, you're probably looking at, um, I would say, years four years something like that depends on temperatures and now I know you say you have several varieties of this and this one is an excellent one by the way everybody Habolito, Habolito and it's yes. uh, yeah. available through Laura Paz but right. uh, a lot of people commonly sell when you go to nurseries a green variety and a purple and they say they're they're grafted but are they all different varieties that are green and purple or they yeah. just go by the color or well like... yeah that's a good point so you'll see in the nursery trade, you know, seedling trees um, and grafted trees. And some people are, like you said, they're just saying they're red or they're green. No, green or purple, yeah. Yeah, or purple, yeah. And so, but there are selected varieties, um, as you mentioned before. And, and I would suggest going with a selected variety. Why? Because more than likely the selected variety is one that the nurseryman or nursery woman has identified as being a good fruit. So your chances of getting something better than just you know something that's unidentified and, and may or may not be good. So the only reason they're hybridizing them is because the color, pretty much. Yeah. So the selection, I'm sure, yeah, has the to do with the and needed. the size of the fruit. Size of the fruit is a big thing for people as well. Um, yeah. On, on the not on the just the green and purple, but the green and purple that are named, those are the ones that have been selected. Selected right by somebody. Yes. Yeah. It's not to say that they're all the greatest thing, but more than likely better than if it's some unknown uh, budwood that had been taken from a tree that you're not sure what. Right? And how easy are these to graft or not graft? Um, my understanding is that they're a little bit tricky to, to graft. I know some people try to air layer them, um, and again, variable success, but um, you know, the nurseries that are doing it certainly have figured out how to graft them easily. And I see it's right next to your sapodilla tree here. Uh, so is that too close or yeah. that's just fine? Well, you know, these trees are actually, um, let me see, this is going to be about 25 feet apart. <clears throat> but this tree, like I said, <clears throat> planted in 2016. Whereas this sapodilla tree was planted in 1975. I see. So much, much bigger, and you can see the size of the trunk in there. It's just this huge, huge tree. But even these trees especially, these trees could be kept bush size if you wanted to, yeah. right? Well, generally, yeah, I think it might be a little bit hard to keep them real, real super small. I mean, maybe some of the varieties, yes. But I'd say most of them, not that easy. You can keep them, as you can see, this old, old tree, and we're keeping it below about 15 feet, 16 feet. Um, and we hedge and top it, and we get here. It's about it's flowering now. It actually has some old has some fruit left on it, um, and it's flowering, getting ready to flower again. What variety um, is this? This one is Tom Fairs. It's an old variety. 
and it's a round variety that's not as popular now more the top shaped and parent you know more the top shaped varieties or oval varieties are more popular now um and we've got about 13 varieties here in our collection 13 yeah yeah um and we do harvest these again and and we're able to sell it to get fertilizer and, and inputs for the care. And I usually prune these trees once a year. Um, and, and because it's all different variety, species of trees in here, it's hard for me to say, oh, we're done with the harvest. Well, there's always something here that's got fruit. So I generally just um, wait uh, until sometime during the year when I get the feeling that that uh, the trees are starting to get a little bit too tall and we'll come in and, and top and hedge. So unlike mangoes or avocados, do these different varieties fruit all year or a uh, time? We have a pretty long season, but I wouldn't say it's all year, but it's a pretty long season. Of all yes. the fruit trees, is there any that you know that fruits all year? Um, naturally on its own all year, um, yeah. Uh, guava is one that, there's two main seasons, but through pruning, you can actually have fruit just about all year round. Of course, you know, long gans, they can be induced to bloom. So theoretically, we could have fruit year round. Carambola, generally we have two harvests. So we've got fruit about nine months of the year. Um, you can manipulate those trees to try to prolong the season or make it a little bit earlier. So maybe we can get up to 10 and a half months of the year. Um, what else could be year round? Well, papayas, bananas sure. year round. Uh, those are the old time. Yeah, yes, those for sure. Uh, but many of them have a limited, a limited season. Um, you know, mamey right now we've been harvesting. Actually, it's a, a little bit early, but we've been harvesting the magnolias, um, and then we'll go into um, harvesting the the pantines or the key wests. Uh, but again, we have about 13, 14 varieties of Mamey, and, and they do come in throughout the year. Um, however, the quality varies quite a bit, and really that's why Pantene and, and uh, Magana are the two most popular uh, because of the quality of the fruit. All right, everybody, that was Jonathan Crane from uh, Trek, the Tropical Research Center for Fruit Trees. I'm gonna put his contact information below. Also, if you want to get a star apple tree or star apple fruit, Julian Laura at Laura Farms has them for sale. Uh, go to his website. I'll put a link below this video to that also. And he also has those particular named varieties that are the ones I recommend if you are going to get a star apple tree. So uh, that is all below the video here. His link and also Jonathan's link. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. And have a great day and keep growing.